All right, great. Now let's get into those 27 New Testament books. Uh, so we got a much shorter time frame uh, that these guys are put in uh, than we do uh, the Old Testament, which was 4,000 years. And this is a very short time that we get these books. So the New Testament, and that's bringing in that new covenant with Jesus Christ. And where they, that this is the promise that they were looking forward to, that hope. They were all hoping in this salvation, and the prophets show it so clearly. Um, you know, we've gone over the prophets many times, so I won't go over it too much with you. So, the Gospels. Well, basically, the, here's what the Gospels are. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's where it starts. The uh, accounts of Jesus when he was there with them before or, and during the crucifixion on the cross and uh, their testimony and the witness. And see, you're seeing the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Christ, which Christ is Messiah. Uh, Hebrew, that's Hebrew and uh, Christ is Greek. And uh, it's written in Greek, uh, where the Old Testament was written in uh, Hebrew and Aramaic. But the Hebrew they speak now, they had to make that language up because they actually didn't even know it. So they have made up a language uh, and then yeah, I did say Aramaic also, like you'll see uh, parts of Daniel uh, is Aramaic. All right, so then the Synoptic Gospels, what they would be would be Matthew, Mark, and Luke because they're same. Uh, they're very similar and they have stuff that deal with, well, they're, the disciples are asking, well, when are these times going to happen? Because Jesus is talking about, um, you know, earthquakes and uh, wars and Jerusalem being surrounded with armies. Well, if you look at that, that uh, desolation that Daniel was talking about, uh, desolation of abomination, and he said, Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies. Well, it was surrounded by armies 40 years after Jesus was crucified. And those guys were during a time of tribulation. They, they were saying clearly, clearly there. All right, so now, so synoptic gospels the same. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is different. So now look at what we would have. Um, oh, interesting about John. He doesn't describe those times, but he wrote a whole separate book that deals with that, which is the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. All right, so the five history books, uh, and I'm going over some of the same books. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Acts was done by Luke. So... Yeah, he would be the only one that's not Jewish. And uh, yeah, the book of Acts, which is great. And uh, you'll see Peter in there where he is uh, sharing the gospel and he's saying this is the time that Joel, the prophet, was speaking about. You know, the sons and daughters that they would be prophesying, having dreams, and then uh, the darkness and these different things coming. And uh, he was sharing the gospel and... Uh, tell them what they had done with Jesus Christ and they said what must we do well you need to repent and turn to God and uh, you'll be forgiven so praise God the Holy Spirit was going out all right so then then we have 14 books of Paul now that's 14 if you call count Hebrews uh, so anyway we'll put Hebrews in there it's easy to deal with uh, so what we would have was Romans first and second Corinthians Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and then Colossians, and then 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, and then 1st and 2nd Timothy, and then Titus, and that's great because they go alphabetical there, and then Philemon and Hebrews. All right, now then what we would have is seven general epistles, which we would have James, 1st and 2nd Peter, so if you want to see what Peter is saying, just look at First and Second Peter. Very easy books to read, and uh, and of course you'll want to look in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You see him there, and in the Book of Acts, and then uh, of course James. James is the brother of Jesus. Now there was John and James, the sons of thunder, and that James got killed early on, and then Paul or Peter gets put in prison after that, and he probably uh, expected to sit hit the same fate as uh, James did, but God had a different plan for him. 
Uh, so, you know, God knows what he's doing with his plans. Now, let's see where are we at. Okay, 1, 2, and 3, John. And remember, the only place you see the Antichrist spoken of is first and second John. So if you want to know what, what the Antichrist is about, go look at those books. And I just did uh, first John to go over that, and second and uh, third John, uh, just one page each. You can read those on your own. And then Jude. All right. Now, and then the last book we would have would be the apocalyptic book, uh, which would be the book of Revelation. All right, praise God. I think I have something on the book of Revelation here. Oh, okay. Here we go, the book of Revelation. And so you can see what's, what is interesting about the book of Revelation is, like I said, um, it deals with all these things. And if you read the Old Testament, you will notice they speak in these manners too. Uh, about coming on a cloud, judgment, uh, the darkness coming in, the sun being covered up, the moon. Um, let's see, uh, like the threshing of grapes until the blood comes out. Um, you know, all those different kinds of things that we see in the book of Revelation. We see also in the prophets and what's interesting, you see those in judgments of nations, like coming on a cloud, and that's where we see Egypt falling, and uh, that destruction that would come against Egypt. Uh, what else? Um, with Edom, and well, with the fall of Jerusalem, because Jerusalem, remember, it fell at, well, the northern tribe, that was with Isaiah, that fell uh, 722 BC, those 10 tribes uh, that got wiped out, and then Judah was left. They went another 136 years, and they had 20 kings. Eight of them were good. The north, remember, they had 19 kings, and not even one of them were good over that over a 200-year period. Now, uh, so yeah, and then 586 BC, when Judah fell, and they did worse than their sister Israel, and so. Uh, yeah, that was when they fell by the Babylonians. Uh, so what else do we have? Um, well, the book of Daniel. Now, I've got something on here on the book of Daniel that I put on the back of this thing. Now, Daniel dealing with the 70 weeks, because I think that's kind of neat to look at too. Now, why is that neat to look at? Well, the only place that people will find a seven-year tribulation, you have to go to Daniel 9, 24 through 27. That's where it's the last little week, seven years of the 70 weeks, or seven, uh, 70 weeks, 70 times seven is 490. And so you see at the time of Daniel, he was prophesying when certain things would be done. Well, let's look at what he was saying in Daniel 9, 24. Uh, there was six things that he said. One. Okay, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. Two, one, finish transgressions. Two, make an end of sins. Now you tell me what you think this looks like. Three, make reconciliation for iniquities. Four, bring in everlasting righteousness. Five, seal up vision and prophecy. Six, anoint the most holy. Well, when do you think these things happened? Well, you know, if you just read the Bible and look at this stuff, it looks like that's what happened when Christ came. And it said, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. Now, it didn't say 70 minus 7, and then you can take that 7 and just move it anywhere you want and make some kind of a tribulation happen. No, that in the middle of that last week, the Christ would be cut off, but not for himself. And so it was when Jesus started his ministry, then three and a half years later, he goes to the cross. And then after that, remember Paul comes in and, well, Paul, Peter, he goes to the Roman soldier. And then Paul also is going and taking that gospel out um, to the rest of the world where the Gentiles are coming in. Because Jesus had to speak first to the Jews. All right. 
Now, Daniel 9, 27, then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Uh, that's that last week. Uh, or seven years is what it's talking about. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. Well, Jesus brought an end to sacrifice and offering. He fulfilled the law and the prophets. So what the prophets were speaking of, remember this was sealed up until that time. Um, that was sealed up. Now the book of Revelations wasn't sealed up. That was to be given right there. And we see when we were reading uh, 1 John and looking at uh, John, the book of John, we see, okay, what do we see there where, um, oh, well, John has the revelation of Jesus being the Word of God. And where do we see that revelation is from the book of Revelation. So uh, a lot of people, well, there's a couple of conjectures about when the book of Revelation was written whether it was during Demetrius' time. Now, John was seen on the island of Patmos at that time, but it didn't say that that uh, is the time of Demetrius that he did the book. He could have been there at another time and written those things. Uh, so, anyway, I think that's good to at least go over those books. And one of the reasons I think it's good for you to at least start reading the books of the Bible and getting more familiar with them is because you'll have an answer uh, for your hope. And these books, no, there's nothing in the world for books that compare. I don't care. There is nothing in philosophy, nothing in New Age, uh, nothing in any other spiritual book that even compares to them at all. Uh, you know, Nostradamus, no spiritual book even can compare to the Bible. These books are showing what is going to happen, and then it happens. It showed just right when Jesus was coming in what um, it would be like, what he would do. And he had the power by the Holy Spirit and witnesses to describe it. And uh, then it gives a power of the Holy Spirit, which is something the world doesn't have in order to uh, do the mission that Jesus gave us. So praise God. I uh, hope that will help you. And uh, like, okay, let me give you an example. I had just my nephew today that was over. Now, uh, okay, he was asking me today about his little sister. Now, his little sister was only alive three days, and he was saying, is she, are you sure? And he was going, is she really alive? And I said, yes, she is with the father. Uh, because, see, she only lived three days. And then he knows because, uh, you know, everybody was telling him then that she's with God. And uh, so, but he was uncertain about that. And then his dog, he was wondering about his dog, if, if his dog was going to be there. Uh, well, I don't really know if his dog will be there, but I, I didn't tell him that. I, I said, you know, whatever you really need will be there. Uh, God will have it for you. But we know and we can be confident that his sister is there in heaven and that uh, I told him that, look, you can be confident. You, man, he just loves Jesus. And uh, his little sister, who's only three and a half, also loves Jesus. And he's only six. Um, but he's just happy to know he's, he will be with Jesus one day and see his sister again. And uh, so... Oh, uh, well, where was I going with this? Um, anyway, oh, oh, that he would be confident that when Jesus comes and he people are before him and he judges that you can be confident that you will enter into the new heaven and new earth when he makes a new heaven and new earth. And he, they, him and his sister know that there will be no thorns there because we go through thorns and those kids know how to step on thorns and go through stuff. There won't be any poisonous plants to worry about, thorns, stuff like that. And even the animals will be really nice. So uh, uh, that's just an example. But uh, praise God, I'm glad that uh, you and your children know the truth and um, are friends. Uh, and I know we all go through some uh, difficult times, but we can do it by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ. So God bless you, and um, I will talk to you again later. And uh, when Jesus sees you, he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant.